Alrighty, we have some basics here. Let's go and check this out. That starts off pretty okay. And they got some weird hiccups and fast motions towards the end there. Whoop, right there. I think it starts around there. Let me just look at the other one. You have multiples here. That one is a bit wonky as well. There's something where it almost feels like it's going there and a bit back and forward. And it's just the illusion of here. You can see this here as you go forward and then it goes kind of straight up and over. It has a bit of a pause and it has a bit of a move like that. So there's another one. And that is... That feels a lot better. That's the heavy one. So I want to critique this one. And we ignore the rotations. We're running a bit out of time. You're at frame 39 here. If I bring this up, let's see how it stops. And dook. I think I think this could work. Ideally, I would have something where it comes down and goes maybe half that height. Then the next one is like barely off the ground, and then boom, and then rolls. It's always a bit of a longer roll with a slight rollback. Like the rollback is a bit of a, a bit of an animation cheat. Does it really have to roll back? But it has kind of a nice finish. So critique wise, that's what I would do. It still has a nice heavy feel. I mean, you know, it who's to say a, a bowling balls from that height are gonna certainly bounce. It would just definitely exaggerate in terms of bounce and then one and then roll. But it does feel heavy. It has a bit of a bit of a stylized jump in terms of the hang time and the pull down. Like that pull down is less physics driven. It feels a bit more like a stylized pull down, especially on this one. But I think this one is the most successful one. So if I close this and go back to this one, this is the one that has funkiness towards the end here so you can then track even through here you can see smaller spacing and then suddenly it starts to accelerate right through this bit but then kind of not anymore through here if we go let's go all super crazy here if i'm going to try to track very sloppily here the middle that's not most accurate one but just to see what happens you can see here the somewhat even spacing through this but then you can see the smaller spacing through here and then the sudden acceleration it's not too accurate in terms of the arc but i think the arc is not really your problem there I think this is all pretty nice i mean again we can go i like this here that you're on the on the bounce up this is lower than this a you avoid the same height you vote you avoid strobing because of that but it also shows the loss of energy so that will be a lower bounce i think that's all great and you gave me the maya scenes so i'm going to open the maya scenes and see what we can do in there so this is going to be a longer whoa critique this is me being not super accurate, but see, I don't think this is there's a problem there. I think the problem starts. It's a little bit of a direction here where it goes a bit like that, just a tiny bit. And then once we get to this, play this in real time. Doom, doom, doom. There's some translate things. I have a feeling that if you do something like this, where it goes this way in your graph editor, that translate it's going to be flat. Key, maybe a key here, depending if you have wave tangents or not. And you can really flatten that ending. My guess is in your case, you have multiple keys where you have a little bit of, I'm exaggerating, but a little bit of something going on where there's sudden speed acceleration. And it's just towards the end. It's all good, all good. Right, right there. That's where it starts to me. Even the roll could be just a bit more long, a bit longer and then a bit more of a rollback. Comes kind of to a not poppy stop, but not like a harsh, but I could 
see something a bit softer there. So the main thing is going to be the end. I'm, I'm assuming in the graph editor it's going to be something messy uh, towards the end here. And if we look at this guy, this guy is a bit wonkier. So I'm going to try again in a very rough way here to put these guys in here. Activate my onion skinning. More or less accurate, but it gives me hopefully a rough idea of what's going on. I can already see it here. That was a bit off. I mean, again, but you can hopefully see that's too low. As in me, my dot was too low. And you can really see it here. I'm going to do one more. This one, I'm going to open them all in Maya. But that's something for you to do as you do anything, right? Anything with obviously timing and spacing. Kind of looking at what is going on. Oh, that was really off. Mine was really off. So I'm, I'm almost rushing through this. But if I go back, you can kind of see. Again, this is not extremely accurate, but I can imagine the graph editor, uh, graph editor shenanigans here. But you can see here, even if it's not super accurate, you can kind of see where the arcs are somewhat wonky, like some spacing, really tight spacing, and then it'll drop through here and then over. But the things with those bats and balls, it can be really, really simplified, where again, with something like this, you basically have graph editor with the TY, so your up and down Y translation is, that curve is literally gonna replicate the look of your bouncing ball. And then the translate is it's just going to be this. Two keys, maybe three, again, depending on what you do with the, with the tangents. And then that's there. Now for the up and down, uh, you might have, you know, broken tangents here. You might have a key and a key here to kind of give it longer hang time. Tangents here, so they're, they're you know, your bounces are like that with tangents like this. You don't want tangents where you have a slight easing out where the tangents are lower like that. I don't really see that problem. It feels every now and then even in timing, but not like you're easing into a drop. There's still a sense of acceleration. I think the biggest culprit is going to be the forward translate with some messiness in the TY, but I think that's going to be that. And you can see this here, right at the end, there's an acceleration. If you look at the energy, boom. Boom, 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 right there, it starts to accelerate. So your, your acceleration curve is going to be like this and a sudden dip like that. So you sent me the scene, so let me this open in Maya. All right, so I just opened the scene and actually I'm going to bring this in so you can see all the frames here. Starting at frame two, and that is that. So what I usually do is, I'm not sure what you have here. Okay, so this must have been the orthographic side, fantastic. Not that you need outline. I'm going to do some stuff here. I'm just so used to my uh, my work setup. Looking around, this was not perspective. There you go. What do you have here? All right, you got a plane. And in the ball, I want to see this here. So it looks like everything is on that controller. Just double checking. I don't see anything else. All right, so it's on here. So this is what we have. Translates are on Z. Okay, okay. So you have the ball moving forward, and I'm going to actually, you have, feels like everything, I'm going to go back to frame one here and open up the timeline. Let's bring this up here. Seems like we can start in frame one. That the translate is on Z, and you can see here that it kind of stops, and you have, yes, weighted tangent on everything. Uh, I don't really work with weighted tangents, so I not that I would recommend something else. I know a bunch of people who do work with this. What I'm seeing here is that in terms of a translate, you have linear keys and lots of you know changes in your speed. I think for that, unless it's something dramatic where the ball bounces and this the surface here that is a reference here. So the surface would be, you know, imagine you have something, I'm going to draw on this, where this is grass, right? Or like some swamp or muddy, sticky something. 
and that ball is going to go forward every time it lands here it will lose that forward momentum because that stickiness is going to be instead of the ball going like that it's going to be erase this it's going to be it's going to that forward momentum is really going to stop every time it lands on this surface which this is not like we're going for classic bouncing ball nothing crazy so what i would recommend is just get your controller here and then your z delete all of this you can flatten that and it's going to be let's just go from the get-go again i don't really work with way the tangents but you can flatten this to some degree like that and you will see the ball goes forward because we're going to go not like slow into something you could if you maybe draw again here maybe if there's a, a surface and it starts to roll and then that on during that drop it will have a forward speed up a little bit maybe i would just keep this more like that and you can see when the ball bounces that's that now again you could going in z here when it stops here i'm going to extend this timeline a little bit more go forward it could roll and back so i usually make sounds when i animate even on bouncing balls you can go eh, maybe to here and maybe to here meaning it's going to go forward roll continue here again i don't work with uh weighted tangents because of stuff like this here it gets it just makes it very very messy not my favorite so you're gonna have to oh i have to change was it so like that so basically what you want to do is it rolls overshoots and comes back a bit so i'm going to do this i'm going to slow that roll down and bring that curve a bit over here so you can see that curve it's going to over roll into that if you look at this here it's not enough so i can go clearly further back maybe to here I'm gonna have a little bit of that. So you go over and then back. So you can see, roll and back. I think we can even wait a bit longer for that roll and not go as far back. This is really subtle and super picky and you can scrub through, you can see the difference. Now it doesn't, you don't have really a rotate, um, what's it called? Uh, key here to show the roll but that's something that for the next pass if you wanted to you can start here and the ball starts rolling till the end but then it's going to be a tricky thing where you really want to make sure that it doesn't slide so we're starting here and then you have you imagine it just rolls rolls or you can see this already how it will have to have a bit of a slowdown. So it will roll, roll. But this already, you can see the amount of translate forward, that roll is way too much. So you can start adjusting this so it feels a bit more accurate. But the thing here is that if you roll, over roll and come back a bit, that's the, you know, when you do this here and it will roll back a tiny bit. I'm exaggerating here. But you will see this here. It overrolls and then slides back. Here you can see that my translate is not big enough. So that trend, that rotation here is way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this by a lot. And then that translate, just go too far. But just so you can see what happens, you can see here. That feels a bit better where the rotate really comes from here. It doesn't feel like it's a spinning wheel. But generally, that's kind of what I would do. My rotation comes a bit too soon here. You can see the ball stops, but the ball's already rotating. But generally, that's kind of that. Now, the main thing in my critique was the height. So if we change this, and you can see here how many keys you have. This feels a bit overkill. You can see a little bit of the changes there. But it's not too bad. I would just probably go... You go here it might only go you know half the height so if you're here and again this is that curve replication is pretty accurate here so i'm gonna half that height here 
And again, not my favorite in terms of weighted tangents. I prefer to have regular tangents just set a few more keys there. So I'm going to be actually fairly clumsy in my in my um, tangent manipulation. But one thing I would do with here, I would break the tangents so that this is happening. You're going to accelerate and not ease in. So it's going to be like that. And then you have to kind of play around with your weighted tangent there to get a bit of a nicer curve with some hang time. Bring this guy. Depends how much hang time you want. So I'm going to actually delete the bunch. This will be your second one, which let's keep this small and then it would just be flat. So again, for these guys, I would break those tangents. You're going to bring this in. You can see here, you want this to be really linear. And this will have a little bit of a move up. Did I break this? Okay. And this will just come down a bit and it's going to be very minimal. So I'm going to bring these in. Whoa. Then you start having different sizes again. This is clumsy because I really never work with weighted tangents like that. I'm just not a fan. I have to break this guy as well. So just manipulate that one side. Oops, that's the wrong one. Break. There you go. Gets too finicky for me. You can see this is not this is not good. But let me just see here. Boom. All right, so obviously the roll is going to be different, but this has to me a more exaggerated heaviness to it. I'm actually going to just because it's distracting. Shading, I'm going to do default shading, and I'm actually going to take the rotations out. So if you just look at the ball, boom. All right, so you can see it goes up, and it feels too fast. Up and that, because I have these over one frame. So you can either reduce the up and down. Ooh, I see what I'm doing here. This is what's funky too, huh? Even though it seems correct height-wise, and then it goes down. So I'm going to, interesting, are we that minimal in the heights? Let me go lean forward my head. Yeah, there's a little bit of an intersection. Then it seems better. Let's make this accurate. But I'm going to give this one more frame and give this one more frame. Doom. That already feels better. And it's tiny, but it just has a little bit of boom, boom, boom. And even then, it feels almost too high. I'm going to go a bit lower. Doom. Even this, dare I say, a bit lower. Flatten these. So messy. And that has a bit of a long holds there. It's this guy. Just reducing this and just expanding it a little bit here. So it's a bit of a softer up and down. You can see that. So it's not so over one frame pop. Boom. Yeah, I mean the rollback is the rollback is too much, but that's kind of to me a bit heavier. And again, you can go even less with this to really just have a barely a bounce there. Reduce this, obviously reduce this one. It's barely up in the air. And it almost feels like if we're that small, you can potentially look at reducing the distance here. So messy. So if, as you play around with this, you can see kind of if I go just really barely up over one frame. Now, I don't know how this is going to record, to be honest. Um, you know, playing in real time and recording and then processing the whole list so i'm seeing this right now but if when you see the recording i'm going to save these so you can see that in maya but for anybody watching this you know however accurate that strobing is going to be but there's a difference to me 
with something that big versus something where, again, we're going much higher. And even if I give this a bit of that, I mean, again, I would bring this to the lower. It's going to be messy here, but like that has a different feel. Like all of these still feel heavy, but I would go more in that direction than what you had before. Now, switching to the other one here, doing, doing, you can see this here. Uh, I just opened the scene. I'm actually going to zoom out a bit. I can't, cannot. All right. I unlocked the camera so I can move this around a bit. So I'm going to. I undid this, so you take all of this and you unlock, and now I can kind of refocus some of that stuff. All right, you can see this here. So we can have a nicer view of this whole thing to the end here. So if I do the same thing as before, again, not that I need that, I'm just always so used to this. And you would think it saved the panel, even though I have it on. It does not always do this. So I'm going to go orthographic side. And you can see here that is the layout. You have motion trail as well. Interesting that it's kind of missing there. So let's check. Yep, keys are on there. Translate. There you go. This is what I was envisioning. All that. That is too much. Same thing here, you will, I mean, let's go back here and just look at the animation and let's go and back to default. And you can see all those hiccups and the, the craziness here, hold on. All right, so I created quickly a new camera because I couldn't zoom in and out for some reason. I'm not sure what your scene setup is here, but again, we see all this. I'm gonna go in there and delete, not all, but everything in the middle. You can take this and it's gonna do again, Accelerate and towards the end have a much longer slowdown. So as you go forward now, that's already much, much better. And you can see here that your actual bounces are pretty good. All that craziness was mostly in a forward translate. Because if I look at this here, that's pretty clean. There's some weird stuff here. You probably just take this out. Whoa, what happened here? Craziness. Again, I'm not used to this and I'm not a fan. But you can see here, you can probably reduce the, the height a bit more towards the end. Give this a bit of a overall. Might as well go like this here. Reduce. I know it's going to mess up. You get see, we'll see some bumpiness there, but I feel like towards the end, it gets a bit much, and this will be really messy because what is going on at the end here? <laughs> well, let me just quickly look at this. Dun, 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 dun. All right, messy, but it already feels better in terms of the amount, like the height. Like as you go forward, everything slows down. The energy slows down. Everything is just losing energy and those bounces just feel a bit better like that this is not you know super polished what i'm doing here but there's still a little bit of a weren't move there that's my messiness in the scale and again here for that is what i said before i'm going to extend that timeline a little bit here you can go forward rolls will be this roll just a bit longer maybe till here ish a couple frames longer so that's when I will go, all right, well, let's go just a bit longer in your roll and then back like whatever time you have here. So you can say, let's go a bit back here. And if I want to do this, whoa, that's a crazy, crazy curve. And you have to do almost something like that and then reduce this guy just a bit. I know it's gonna be all messy, but just to illustrate that point, let's see. Goes forward, rolls, and back. Whoa! All right, much too far. Okay, I see, I see. Well, what if we go only like this? It's a bit much still. 
different than what we had in the previous shot. And of course, as you do this, you're gonna have to approach that stop a bit differently, a bit more like that, so that the speed is not crazy. So the distance feels already better. Let's go again. And you go da 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 da, -da and roll, stop. There you go. That feels much better. Boom, 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 roll, stop. Just enough. So I hope that makes sense. But as you could see, again, this is all pretty good. Again, I will kind of avoid all these. It gets a bit of a messiness, but generally it's not too bad. The main thing to look at was this curve. So I want to save this here. I'll pause the recording and save the scene as well. All right, we're back with the last scene. So this is the ping pong. You can see here the craziness towards the end. So again, this is what we have. I think it works pretty well, the first half visually here, so we'll run here-ish. And then it has those sudden accelerations. So again, I'm assuming in the graph editor, it has like all those little keys that do all kinds of crazy stuff there. So let's see, select this easy. There you go, actually more than I thought. So you can see it's fairly even. That's why this looks fairly okay through this. And then you can see here to stop and go, stop and go. So once again, this, this gets obviously redundant, like all the stuff that I'm explaining, hopefully it makes sense. I'm going to have a bit more slowdown, starts. Now, if we do this, let's check it out again. Feels better with a crazy <laughs> acceleration through there. All right. Maybe I was too crazy with this. I like the slowdown though. All right. All right. This will be also your height. You can see how long we stay at that height. So you might want to change that where it's. Again, you got to break these. So there's no ease in. And more like that. This gets a bit messy all through here, huh? How a person take this out and just go with less curves, get a bit of, of hang time in there, but not too crazy. I'm telling you, I would never work with weighted tangents. Just gets so messy. Just shows you exactly how inexperienced I am with that. But that will have a more yeah, it's that. You already feel that drop, that arc is going to feel a lot better. And you can see changing textures here. All that feels a bit better. So to me, generally, I would reduce this to just a couple keys and not all of that. Because again, like stuff like that, you can see the messiness there. I mean, you might as well take these out, uh, break the tangents there. I mean, some people sometimes when they do this, you can grab these and scale them. Whoa. Scale them in. What am I doing? I can't. Ah. Usually you can take these and scale them in like that. I thought you can hockey uh, with my funkiness. You can do that. Sometimes people do it like this. I just like to do it manually and look at that like this. These bumps here again, that's the, the funky part. You have to kind of look at it. You can see how long. You go up here and it's shorter here. It's almost like you can take, take that here and reduce the time a bit. It's not too bad. It's a bit long through there. Again, I'll probably take these out and just reduce all of that a bit more, to be honest. Again, this just goes back to just not quite how I work. So generally you would grab, or I will grab all these and do a horrible job. This guy. <laughs> and then you can see how far we're going here with that. These guys here, I would not have this. Where are we? Okay. 
see i would simplify personally all of this take all that out and just go with your broken weight of tan it's more like that to give you a little bit of acceleration like that you get a longer hang time with these that high it's not too bad and keep this stylized enough but you can see here how this is too long feels too long here as well with i would take these out go in if it's not weighted tangent you know if it's regular keys i would do what you have here i'm still one of those keys here and do something where you have multiple keys to give you that extra hang time but with weighted tangents, I mean, that's also why you can use it weighted tangents. You can manipulate the curves to make it look more like that. So I'm going to give this, you know I mean, like a bit more hang time. And then the drop, it's just, again, just not quite how I work. But if you watch this again, doom, 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 doom. it's a bit messy throughout the end, but it's just me messing things up as well. But that just feels all generally better. You see that little bump where I stole the key. And same thing here, I would overshoot and then roll back. So if you look at this here and back, so we can extend this a little bit, take that overshoot and back. This might end maybe around here. And this time I'm going to look at in the viewport. Yeah, you can see how crazy this is. So we go from here. So if it stops here, I want it to go back maybe that far. Not more, but then we have to address this massively long curve through there. Then you would have to break it again. I'll probably add just more keys, but something wonky. Holy macro. What does it look like? Roll back. And it's too much of a sudden stop here my taste that's probably what you're seeing here and you can also just flatten this and exaggerate that roll back a bit more just a tad just not let's see here it's too much I also need more time and yeah like that it comes to a stop too quickly so to me it would be let's give this all more time over there and give this guy just more time to overroll and maybe less there this is looking very wonky so maybe a bit less yeah feels better it's definitely overrolling too much for the sake of presentation it's a bit more of a longer roll. And stop. Feels better. Roll, 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 and back. Just give this enough time for the ball to go and back a bit. Again, we're in the land of slight exaggeration. Just for, that, for that exercise, it's fine. But that is that. But again, generally... Just after deleting the um, the forward transit, which for you is in Z, it already fixed a bunch of stuff. So with bouncing balls, for me at least, it's less is more. Where I, I approach things more like this and not too many keys, just to keep it a bit simpler and easier to edit. And now if you go into more character stuff, then you know, you're going to have frame by frame. It's going to be messier depending on your actions, but... The, uh, to me, keeping things simple like this will also make it easier to, like I said, to edit, make changes, you know, depending on if you if you show this to someone and they have notes, whatever it is. But that is that. But it's it's already in good shape. Again, my major thing is you translate. You just get away from your, all the messy, messy keys. It has to be just a roll and come to an end. And that is that. And again, you can see this here. If we have the curve and the ball, in the same frame and stop again i would still make this probably longer let's see it comes to 
to a, a, a slowdown sooner and really elongate this long, long up, 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 slow and back. All right, that is that. I'm going to save this, of course, as well. I'm going to send you all the, those files back and that's that for a very long critique. But why not? You ask me to look at your my scenes and that's uh, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, email me if you have any questions about that. That's it. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.